Hey everybody, Bob Chickarolo, the voice of bodybuilding is back. You like our new backdrop? Just got it in. We are looking to go bigger and better, of course. With every podcast, a little bit clearer, a little bit more sophisticated, because that's what we do here at the Voice of Bodybuilding podcast. The VOB with B-O-B, as my daughter likes to put it. Big shout out to Melania. All right, folks, we're going to get right to it because we've got a lot to cover here today. The Arnold Classic is just one week away, one week from today. I will actually be on a plane to Columbus, Ohio. Once again, the Arnold Classic will be taking place. Now, the Expo is not going on. Uh, let's be clear. Um, there was a little confusion a little while ago with whether the show was canceled itself. The show was never canceled. Arnold was very insistent that it goes on. Uh, they did not want to miss a year. And now the Expo is a different story because a lot of mandates have been put back, especially in Ohio. Um, so that's going to still stand. Uh, there's a mask mandate in place also. Uh, so that's still a little up in the air as to what's going to go on, how much are they going to enforce. I guess we'll see when we get there. Um, and the reason I say we is normally I'd be going there for the Sunday showcase uh, with Arnold. We've been doing that for probably about 10 years now for most of you that have been coming. Uh, you've been treated to a one-on-one -on -one with uh, me and Arnold and then the occasional guests. We've had Franco, rest his soul, uh, and, and plenty of other uh, strongmen. We've had Brian Shaw. We've had Larry Wheels. We've had all kinds of people uh, that, that have uh, joined us for the Sunday Showcase. This year, it will be going on, except that it's moved to Friday. Uh, because it's not a true Arnold Classic in the sense uh, that it's a two-and-a-half-day expo, we decided to keep it in place at a popular demand. But it will be going on Friday night. So we've got the Friday night showcase for the first time in history. Uh, and that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, it is not short of talent. We have some Arnold Classic champs of yesteryear coming. Ronnie Coleman needs no introduction, of course. Uh, Cedric McMillan, anybody who's ever seen an interview with Cedric knows he's about one of the most entertaining guys in the industry. So I'm looking forward to sitting down and Chatting with these guys. Uh, Victor Martinez, the Dominican dominator, is back. Uh, we will hear from him. Haven't heard from Vic in a long time. He has uh, started his own supplement brand, so we're going to catch up with Vic on uh, what's new in his life. I believe he has hung him up, but we can ask him that on Friday night. And uh, Mike Ashley, there's a name from the uh, past. Uh, Mike Ashley, one of the great natural bodybuilders, uh, as he was dubbed years ago uh, in the IFBB, uh, won many, many titles. Uh, brought a level of muscularity that uh, few had at that time, and uh, evident by the fact that he actually won one of the early Arnold Classics. So uh, those gentlemen will be joining me and Arnold, of course, on stage Friday night. So if you get a chance, if you're coming out, folks, please uh, uh, stop by Friday night and, and catch the seminar. It's always a great time with Arnold, of course. Um, now, the other reason I'm going to be there is a little bit of breaking news here. For the first time in history... The voice of bodybuilding will be on the Arnold stage podium. That's right. In addition to my other duties uh, around the world, uh, most years, this year not as much as uh, others with the COVID-restricted travel, I will be donning the stage for the first time at an Arnold Classic. So this will be exciting. Um, I've done plenty of work with the Lormers over the years, of course, uh, and I thank Jim Lormer in particular for uh, bringing me on about 10 years ago to do the, sh the showcase. Uh, but finally, I have an opportunity to grab that microphone and, and do what I do best. So I'm looking forward to meeting up with the crew out there and uh, venturing into new grounds with the Arnold. Of course, the Olympia. We are only three weeks out from the Olympia. It's crazy because it's a little bit of a shortened year this year. The Olympia, as everybody knows, was in December last year. Uh, now moved up into October. So it's about two and a half months earlier, as it would be. Uh, so the... Off-season definitely didn't seem as, as long as normal. Usually it kind of creeps up on you before you know what you got eight weeks. We are three weeks out. Uh, stories are developing as we speak. Uh, I'm going to be doing a whole podcast just on the Olympia lineups. My projected uh, winners, victors, uh, who's, who's going to be defending the titles, who can repeat, who might get beat. We're going to see as these lineups are uh, forming as we speak. Uh, and there is a little bit of an interest in that some of the athletes coming over from overseas – uh, are having a tough time getting over here. Uh, if you're leaving late, like Ruli Winkler did last year, uh, he got caught up in Turkey and wasn't able to make the show. Uh, so most of the athletes have been here for a little while now. Uh, Big Rami, I know, uh, he's been here probably almost a month already. Uh, he's down there getting the crap beat out of him by Dennis James, of course. The menace 
was in his corner last year, and, and uh, I made a mention then, last year, in particular at the Sunday seminar, the Weeder uh, Superstar Seminar we've been doing for some years now, after the O. Uh, another gem, if you guys ever get a chance, if you're out at the O, uh, and you don't have to get on a plane or, you know, beat it to get, to get home, check out the Sunday seminar. It, it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we, we, it's, it's very well attended, but I think a lot of people uh, miss it because they think everything's over after Saturday night. But this is the only event that we get to talk about stuff after the show, after we have results. We've got winners, we've got losers, we've got storylines. So uh, it's always a great time, but I, I think it's one of those, those uh, uh, undercover gems that just nobody seems to um, think about right off the bat. But it's on the website. It's at MrOlympia.com. You can see it displayed there. Uh, 11 o'clock, I believe, is still the start time. You can check me on that uh, on Sunday. So check it out if you get a chance. We have all the champs there. Uh, whoever wins the night before is usually there. And then we usually have some other uh, Olympians that join us in there, some of the runner-ups. And we've had some fantastic previous uh, seminars in years past. Uh, guys like Melvin Anthony and Dexter and Jay when, when he was on top and Ronnie when he was on that. We'd have Ronnie and Jay there which was always interesting. Flex Lewis uh, joined us many, many times uh, throughout his run of, of, of seven Olympia titles. And um, we need to be catching up with Flex. We're going to have to see what he's doing, what he's up to. Uh, clearly not in the show this year, but I think he's got his sights still set on that open. And we'd love to see Flex in that open. I'd love to see what he can do. So hopefully we'll get our chance next year to see if the uh, big man can bring it, get up there with the big boys. The Arnold Sports Festival on Instagram. That's where all your information can be found. All the times, classic physique, fitness, bikini, and the men's open. So it's a little smaller than normal. They don't have all the divisions. That'll be returning next year along with the expo, the uh, fitness festival, as you will. That said, the only, uh, another clarification, the only division that's qualifying for this year's Olympia is the men's open. Classic, fitness, and bikini do not qualify the winners for this year's Olympia. It rolls over to next year. They made an exception for that men's open because there was much less shows that were originally on the schedule, but due to the COVID restrictions, a lot of the shows canceled, especially overseas. They thought it was important to give an exemption uh, for the winner. Now, some interesting names coming up in there because there's still a few top names that have not qualified. Most notably, my man, the King Snake himself, Steve Kuklo. Uh, Big Steve's got to bring it. This is it. The last chance saloon. It's one and you're done. You're either winning, you're in, or you're going to be out there sitting watching the show. So he's got all his uh, marbles into this bag, and it's going to be interesting to see if the big man can pull it off. Um, he would be my odds-on guy to win, but Sergio's coming. Sergio Oliva is not to be denied. This guy's been working hard. He, He's been flying under the radar a little bit this year. You haven't seen him yet this year. So he's going to be coming in fresh. And again, these guys are looking for that number one spot. Points ain't doing it unless you're already in the points uh, hunt. But actually, I, I clarify myself, the points actually do not go towards this year's Olympia. Uh, quick clarification on that. Points will actually go towards next year's Olympia. Only the winner. So if you take second and you were fourth in the points, it doesn't help you in this case. Uh, the Olympia is just three weeks away, so uh, qualifications are done, folks. This is it. It's, it's one exemption, and the winner will move on and be on that Olympia stage just two weeks after this competition. All right, so i got to give a quick shout-out to my man, Brock Sayers. His father, James, has been in contact with me. Now, I met these guys at the seminar, uh, funny that we're talking about that, last year. Now, Brock is a young man, and he's got a big heart. I know he's been a little bit under the weather. His father contacted me, said he got the covid uh, hasn't been feeling too well lately, but Brock, I want to give you a big shout out, buddy. Keep your chin up, keep fighting, keep that spirit alive. Uh, he, he was so excited to be at the seminar last year. We got a chance to uh, let him hold the championship belt and, and meet uh, Big Rami <laughs> up close and personal. So uh, it was pretty cool. But uh, big shout out to you, Brock, man. Keep keep going, buddy. Hopefully, we'll see you at this year's Olympia. And uh, big shout out to your father, James. James, thanks for being in touch with me. Let me know how Brock's doing out there. All right, so folks, we're going to get to it. The question of the week. For those that saw the last podcast, all right, we went into uh, a lot of the misconceptions that were put out there a few weeks back, and uh, some of those involved uh, whether the criteria should change or not. And I was very clear in my response and, and uh, 
and uh, what the Pro League is wanted to be putting out there, which is that there was no changes at this point for anything. All right, it's business as usual. Again, Arnold Olympia just around the corner. There'll be no changes. Now, that did spawn some questions from the people. And uh, one of them I thought was a very good question. And, and I'm going to bring this up on my phone so I can make sure we got this right. Uh, so the question is, so not to ask if the, 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 if the criteria is changing, but is criteria going to be applied? So this guy's question is about application of current criteria, not that whether it's changing. All right, let's just make that clear. And he goes on to specifically cite women's physique. He thinks that's probably the most egregious when it comes to criteria that's not being followed. Now, he was nice enough to actually post all the uh, rules of women's physique. Women's physique athletes should display more muscular density than seen in figure, clear muscle separate. Now, I am very well familiar with this because I actually wrote the criteria for women's physique. So I appreciate you uh, including it in for me, but... Uh, it's actually from my pen. So I am very, very familiar with the criteria as it is. So is it adhered to? And we're going to cover this in general, not just for women's physique. Uh, he wanted some clarity on that, and I do appreciate the question. So here's the answer, okay? Criteria is set forth in each division uh, with similar things that you just heard. Uh, obviously, as you go up, the criteria reflects more of that division. For the more muscular divisions, it's going to emphasize, obviously, the muscle, uh, thickness, uh, that type of thing, density of muscle, conditioning, of course. Uh, like we said, there's, there's no one piece of criteria that's more important than the other. They're all equal in that the judges are looking for an overall look. Now, this gentleman's question is, is it adhered to? In his opinion, it's not. He, and he cites some, some examples of uh, women's physique in particular that he feels, he sees, he says there shouldn't be any striated glutes, but he sees them plenty of times. He's got lots of examples. Here's how it works. Well, we can put all the criteria we want together. Following it has to be based on who's in front of you. So if all the athletes are a little bit harder or more striated or uh, even if they're softer, okay, let, let's go the other way. The judges can only judge on what's in front of them. So when we first started women's physique, let's say, some years back, uh, and some of the early winners came out, there was a lot of people pointing the finger going, oh, that's what they're looking for. Well, it may not necessarily have been what they were looking for. It was the best of what was there on the stage at the time. Okay, you can't put somebody in position that doesn't exist. You have to go with the athletes. Let's say there's 10 of them in front of you. All right? And eight of them are harder than you think they should be. Let's just say it's in figure, all right? And two are just completely out of shape. Okay, well, obviously you can't put them in the top two. So now you're dealing with the eight girls that are all about equal, but they're all too hard. Well, it's all equal in terms of what the judges are judging, but it may not necessarily fit the written criteria to a T. All right, you follow me? The judges can only put people in place that are standing before them. We can't invent criteria on the spot. Now it becomes an effort of who fits the criteria best. Now that might be a girl that's got uh, uh, some striated glutes or she's a little bit on the hard side uh, or, or a little on the muscular side for women's physique. Um, and the same thing goes for any, any division or any class as it would be. The judges are always looking to put in place people that best fit the criteria. So are they following it? Well, they're following it to the best of their ability. All right. If you got people up there that do fit the bill, then yes, they absolutely should be placed above those who don't because that is the criteria, that is the written rule, and that, that's the look that they're supposed to be looking for. So on that, I would absolutely, absolutely give that to you. Um, usually it's an answer that's in the middle someplace. Rarely do you get somebody who fits it perfectly. Now, you will get better examples of that as you move up the ladder uh, as you go from local to regional to statewide, junior national, national, all the way up to the pros. All right, once you get to the pro level, you are going to get people, 90% uh, of those people, just to make up a random percentage figure for you, will fit the criteria pretty close to what they're looking for. That's why they're Olympians, okay? If you're high enough that you can be on the Arnold stage, the Olympia stage, or world championships, that type of thing, chances are great that you're going to fit the criteria a whole lot better. 
Local levels, it's almost impossible um, because it's all over the place. I mean, listen, you are subject to whoever enters the show. We've all been at local shows. We've all been at regional shows. And, you know, listen, sometimes there's only uh, one or two people in the class. Now, that doesn't mean that they fit the criteria best. That just means that's all you had on stage. Now, this quickly disappears as you get up to, the let's say, the USA or the Nationals. Because we've all been to those shows as well. And there's always somebody that pops out that you go, how did this guy even qualify for this show? Or how did this girl th thought she was going to do anything here? Well, again, you're always subject to whoever shows up on game day. So if you're in Minnesota and, and you're in a local show there and you're the only one in your class, well, you win by default. Now, it doesn't mean you should be going to the Nationals or the USA or the North Americans. Um, and, and a lot of that falls on the trainers uh, or if they've got anybody that's that close to them that can be truthful with them. And tell them, look, it, maybe you should train a little bit more. Or I don't think you're quite at that level yet. You know, Maybe you should go in some more competitions and see where you place. It's always best to move up. For, in the old days, we did this a lot. You really didn't move up the ladder until you won at that level you were at. Then you had license to feel as though you belonged at the Junior Nationals uh, or at the National Championships. Now, again, we're talking ancient history. I know we're talking about the old days. There was no pro cards at the juniors. There was no runner-up pro cards. Back then, you had to actually win the overall to, in order to move on, uh, which made people remain in the turnstile a whole lot longer at the, at the amateur level, uh, which ultimately lended for better physiques when they got to the national level. That's why every time you see a picture from the 90s or somebody puts a video out, and everybody jumps on the band and goes, wow, the physiques were so much better back then. Well, there's a few reasons behind that, and we can, we can cover that in a future podcast. Um, but the main thing was that people were there sometimes for years. Listen, trust me, I was there for 13 years trying to get my pro card. Now, while that was an extreme case, it was not uh, unlikely for bodybuilders, let's just say, to be in the amateurs four, five, six, seven years to get to a level that you could win the show and then turn professional. Uh, the difference back then was if you got to that point, if you actually got to the position that you could get to the pros, by the time you got there, uh, if, if you were you know, uh, genetically blessed and, and good enough to, in that sense, you could instantly go in there and make an impact on the pros. And you saw this with guys like Kevin Lavroni, Sean Ray, Flex Wheeler, uh, uh, Mike Matarazzo, I, I go right down the list. These were guys who went in there, uh, got their pro card relatively quickly. Uh, and back then it was probably in the, I would say, uh, mid-20s was probably your average, uh, you know, 21 to 24, 25 in that range, early to mid-20s. That was usually around where guys were able to turn pro if you had the genetics and you were able to put it all together. And um, those guys were instantly able to, to hop on the uh, pro circuit. And sometimes even the case of the Olympia, like a Lavroni or, or a Flex Wheeler, and place, it's almost unheard of these days. We haven't seen that in some time. Now, we've got some great young talent coming up at that Olympia level we're going to be keeping our eyes on uh, this year. Uh, most notably, uh, uh, Hunter Labrada. Fantastic physique. I believe he was eighth last year, if I'm not mistaken. That's a guy that could be literally knocking on the door of that top six. Uh, Akeem Williams, another great talent. All the muscle in the world. Uh, Nathan Diasha, uh, th there's a whole bunch. Uh, uh, Sergio, who, who um, he's not in his 20s anymore, I don't believe, but he's still a young talent when it comes into the world of bodybuilding. I, I don't think we've seen the best of Sergio yet, uh, which is pretty scary for some of the other competitors because uh, this kid can he can bring it. Uh, he can give he'll certainly give Kuklo all he can handle uh, at the Arnold coming up. So we're going to see how that fight turns out. Not to take some of the other names out because you got a William Bonac. Um, that, that's a guy who consistently is under the radar. And when you put out the big names, he's not usually a name that you hear. But all he does is show up every year in condition, in shape, and in contention. Uh, so that's not a guy that you want to discount that he could take the title. Now, it's clearly Big Ramy's title uh, for the taking. He's in control. He's the champ. If he brings what he brought last year or a little bit better, he's going to be very, very difficult to beat because of the amount of muscle that this guy's got. You have to see him in person. Pictures are impressive enough. In person, 
ridiculous. Widest guy I've ever seen. More muscle on his frame than, than almost anybody I've ever seen. He's right up there with Ronnie when it comes to muscle per square inch. Um, you know, could he go on a run like a, like a Ronnie or, or a Lee Haney or those type of guys? Possibly. I, I don't know if we've seen that. Now, he has been beaten by some of the other guys. Um, uh, Hadi Chupan is in the mix as well. Can't discount him. Um, uh, Brandon Curry has beaten Big Ronnie as, as well as Bonac. So he's, he is vulnerable if he comes in off because those guys are so good that you can't give up 2-3% at the Olympian level. Uh, you will lose. Those guys are that tight uh, and that comparable uh, because there isn't anybody like a Phil Heath right now, even Big Rami, all right? Great as he is. Phil came along, instantly you said, this guy is going to go on a run. Five, six, seven, we didn't know where he was going to end up, but you knew he was going to be in contention for many, many years to come, and, and he proved it. Genetics like that do not come along all the time. Now, Rami's got his own gifts, no pun intended there on the Phil thing, but uh, he's but he's beatable. He's beatable. If he comes in, the, the, the trouble with the big man is they've got to nail that conditioning. If you're off a Bonac or a Hottie Chupan or uh, uh, Brandon Curry or, or one of these type of guys here, uh, Ruley Winkler, we haven't even mentioned him yet. These guys, will, they'll get you. Listen, Ruley's not too far off either. If he brings back that magic he had just two years ago, uh, he's in contention. The people certainly liked him. That's why he was voted people's champ a couple of years ago. Uh, I do hope he gets over here a little bit earlier this year so he doesn't get stuck overseas. Uh, from what I understand, he's got that handled now. So, um, But uh, Hadi Chupan is, is here. He's been here for three, four weeks already, uh, training with uh, Hani Rambod once again. Uh, he's going to be bringing all these guys can handle. So we've got some, some great bodybuilding coming up. Um, circling back real quick, there is a free webcast uh, for the Arnold. You will be able to watch it for free. They're putting it out there for the people. They want to give a little something back this year because they don't have the full boat. And uh, I think that's a great thing to do. So you will be able to see that. All that information, of course, is uh, on Instagram at the Arnold Sports Festival. Of course, you can uh, catch it at their official website. Um, all that information is there. Pay-per-view information is out for the Olympia. And again, that information can be had at MrOlympia.com. Of course, all that information and the point standings and everything else you can possibly think of uh, is at the biggest bodybuilding site in the world. Of course, that is NPCNewsOnline.com. So that's uh, news and notes for today. There is uh, lots to cover this week, folks. And now that we've got the, the setup here a little bit better the way we want it, we're going to be pushing these things out on a weekly basis, if not more. Um, but I wanted to get that one question out there. I thought it was a great question on criteria. Hope that answers it for everybody. I hope it lends some clarity. That's the whole point of this podcast is to lend some clarity from the inside, uh, from my experience, and, and of course, uh, from the side of the pro league. Any and all information that you will ever hear will come, come from the Pro League. Any change in order, any change in criteria, any change in rules, uh, any significant changes that are going to be announced will come directly from the Pro League, or if I'm obviously privy to that information, uh, with their permission, of course, I'll be putting it out right here. So you can always be sure that whatever you're hearing uh, has the approval from Jim Mannion, from Tyler, from the Pro League, uh, and, and we always give you that promise here. So that's going to wrap things up here, folks. Hope that answers some questions for everybody. Keep the questions coming, folks. Get on, subscribe, Voice of Bodybuilding. It's on YouTube. Catch me at my IG handle, of course, in a, in a, a IFBB Pro Bob Chick is my uh, personal on IG. So you can catch me at any of those all week. Fire out all the questions you want, folks. I will get to them, I promise you, as we can every week. Uh, uh, we're going to be pushing these out two, three times a week. Uh, from this point forward. So get the questions in. I'll be sure to, to uh, answer them the best of my ability. And that's going to wrap it up here.